Well, you're welcome to the sports segment here on AM Show. My name is Benedict Tosu. Tonight, UEFA Champions League is back. First leg semi final uh, at London, that's the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, where Spurs will take on Ayas. And then tomorrow, we'll have the big one, of course, at the Camp Nou, where Barcelona will come up against Liverpool. Previews uh, will come later, but uh, we have to start here on the local scene. And Bukum Chelsea have been banned temporarily from using the Golden City Park following Sunday's violent incident. Now, two Asante Kotoko officials were mercilessly beaten up by Arid fans after a misunderstanding where the home team hours to kick off. Well, the GFA Normalization Committee released a statement last night to that effect. Asai Bediako has more. The Normalization Committee of Ghana Football has ordered a temporary ban on Brecum Chelsea from using the Brecum Golden City Park at its home venue with immediate effect. The decision has become necessary due to the unfortunate incidents that occurred during match day 8 between Brecum Chelsea and Asante Kotoko, played on Sunday, April 28. This decision is in accordance with Article 15, Subsection 2 of the GFA General Regulations, which states that the GFA may order the closure of any league centre where the safety of clubs, match officials or spectators cannot be guaranteed. We are by a copy of this letter asking the NC Special Competition Committee to determine the venue for Brecum Chelsea FC's subsequent home matches in accordance with the provision of Article 15, Subsection 3 of the GFA General Regulations. This order is without prejudice to the determination of the case pending before the disciplinary committee. All right, so that was my colleague Asai Bidiakos' report. Well, aside the temporary ban on Chelsea from using the Golden City Park uh, Kotoko policy analyst, Dr. Amosapon has been banned from all football-related activities following his involvement in the chaos that happened last Sunday at the Golden City Park. Well, we were hoping to speak to uh, the spokesperson of uh, Brukum Chelsea, uh, that's uh, Richard uh, Kukweji, to tell us more. Okay, so we have Richard. Uh, on the line. Richard, thanks so much uh, for joining me. Uh, I made mention of uh, the policy analyst of Asante Kotoko, that's Amo Sapon, who has also been banned from all football related activities. Before we even go into your case, what do you make of that? Hello, Richard. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, Richard, I was asking that uh, yesterday when the statement came from the normalization committee of the GFA, together with your statement was uh, the one that talked about Amosapon, who is policy analyst of Asante Kotoko. He's also been banned from all football-related activities. I don't know what you make of that. Yeah, uh, when it, good morning and uh, good morning to your viewers also. Thank you for the opportunity giving me. Uh, we are not uh, doing any contest with Dr. Amosapon. We only have an issue with the NC. For the NC to ban Amosapon clearly shows that you are not, and giving a, a temporary ban to Bukum Chelsea, you are not teaching Bukum Chelsea fairly. With the article that you quoted, that the FA may, may have that power to close a venue that has security threat. Mm. And for that matter, match officials, club, and spectators, if it cannot be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Now, you are, able, uh, you are able to give a ban to Amosapon, who brought the gun to the stadium, and gave that five warning shot. And clearly, it shows that a corporate has been found. So mm. to ban Bukum Chelsea, what is the cost? Is it because Bukum is a venue and is being used by Bukum Chelsea? Mm -hmm. That is the problem we are finding to understand now. Bukum Chelsea did not give the gun to Amos Apon. Okay. Bukum Chelsea did not do anything at the time that the gun was not fired. Mm -hmm. And Mustafon got the opportunity to enter the stadium to watch the match as an official of Asante Koroko. So now, if you are banning us, are you telling us that from Bekum Chelsea not able to prevent Mustafon from watching the game? Is, is that our, our, our reason to deserve this temporary ban? Okay, so of course, the ban for you is unacceptable. Very, very true. We are not accepting that decision, and we will call on the MMC to rethink of the decision that they has brought out yesterday. And if nothing is done about that, for now.
now what we've decided that we put on hold our training schedules temporary until we hear from the NC. We put our training schedules on hold until we hear from them. Well, it's very unacceptable. You can't just get it. What is the article to ban Amos upon? When our former president was banned, Gosin and the chief, people gave him articles. You just wrote just a, a, a raw statement. So upon what basis? The rules, the regulations. Which which part did Amos upon violate? He just gave a raw statement. But Brekum Chelsea. Yeah, you yesterday, last an night. Quoting an article. Okay. L last night, I had a conversation with you. Uh, talked about uh, whether you guys were going to uh, play in a competition. I'd already sp uh, spoken to uh, your chairman, Dase, and now I'm in Kitia, and he confirmed to me that you guys were not going to, you know, continue the competition. Do you still stand yes, by that? that? that, that that's what I said. For now, we will put on hold our training schedule. Of course, and it means that if you but, 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 but if your okay, so if your training schedule is or, or if, if your training schedule is on hold, and it means that uh, you are not preparing for your next match day, which is uh, just tomorrow. Indirectly, yes. But your next but, match but, day is yeah, away. We were supposed to play Midiama tomorrow, an outstanding game with Bekum. Mm -hmm. And the reason is that that on the agreement form that was provided. Before the competition began, mm. we chose Brekum as our venue. Okay. And Brekum just cannot play in the NC competition, apart from Brekum as a venue. Okay. All right. I so don't know if you are getting me. No, no, I understand perfectly what you're saying. Yes, yes. Our training schedules are on hold. They are not doing training for now, temporary, until the NC is ready to tell us what they are supposed to do. The access is quoted. Mm -hmm. The article quoted in the letter that we are seeing. Who, mm. who brought that? What is the cause for that? Okay. All right, Richard. We'll no, see we, how we that just will want go, to so. know. We just want to know the reason for giving us a ban. What okay. article you gave us? Mm. We did not make that place on safety place. Okay. So you, you've made your points. One you said is unacceptable, and uh, you want the uh, normalization committee to rethink the decision to temporarily uh, ban your club uh, from. Uh, playing at the Brookum Golden City Park, and also uh, your training schedule is on hold. Thanks so much uh, to uh, you for talking to us this morning. So that was uh, Richard AJ, his spokesperson of Brookum Chelsea. And Chelsea, of course, becomes the second team to receive a temporary uh, ban from using their home venue. The first was Indiana Stars. But the question many are asking is, should teams be banned temporarily to serve as a deterrent or eradicate crowd violence at their home venue. So, well, Dreams FC executive chairman Keto Kweku doesn't think so. Uh, last night he posted on his Facebook page that he doesn't uh, think that's the right decision. And that will, of course, lead me to my next guest uh, on the phone. Joe Motri is a strong advocate of everything that will not help the game. And of course, uh, crowd violence is one of them. Joe, thanks so much for joining me this morning. Always a pleasure uh, talking to you. I mean, let's start uh, from Kate's uh, point of view. He thinks that it is not advisable to ban teams from their home venues. Because, of course, if you do that, and let's say you are taking Bekum Chelsea uh, to Tamale to play their home games, and if Asante Kotoko is going there, Asante Kotoko now would also will feel the pain. I don't know what you think about that. I agree with my former boss on, on one condition. Mm. That is, if we are looking at the degree of the offense or the degree of the problem at that venue, mm then we can say, okay, this problem does not uh, require that we ban the center. Mm. But you see, we have to look at the problem we have at hand. If you have people going to a match venue mm -hmm. and pulling guns, firing warning shots, and these are not people who belong to the police service. If you have people going to a match venue, pelting stones, mm the extent of causing head injuries, people bleeding, we have to rush them to the hospital. Then, even if I was the NC chairman, my immediate reaction would be to look at the laws, whether the laws give me that power to place a ban on that center, I'll do it immediately. But if it doesn't mm. deal with the problem in the long term, okay. what it does in the short term is that it, it brings some sanity, it brings some level of confidence in the people who are watching us. I, I have been very disappointed with a lot of the things that went on 
last Sunday mm. and how we have reacted to it. Look, we can ban these centers. We can suspend people in football administration from going to such venues. Mm. We can even tell them not to uh, 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 do anything with football like we have done to the court of officials. Mm. But the problem, look at the pictures you have been showing. There were people who were doing things who the police could have arrested if not for anything, for questioning. Mm. There were people who were seen throwing stones, injuring people. If none of these people were arrested, if we were not able to pick even one of these people, then I, I can tell you that this problem is going to resurface because when hooligans come to a match venue and do the things that they do, that all of us condemn, and at the end of the day, the police cannot arrest them, we cannot prosecute them, we cannot jail them. I tell you, it emboldens others to also go to other venues and do what they want. Hmm. And I'm saying that not until we are able to deal with the problem in that manner, that is arresting and prosecuting people for the things they do at our match venues, we are always going to have this misbehavior. Hmm. And we should be very careful. Okay. I think that Ghana football has seen the worst of uh, 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 problems at, at, at match centers in 2001. That was the worst. Mm. So it is perhaps not good to even overlook that and say the worst is here to happen. Mm. But if you look at the things that are happening, mm. if, we, we, if we don't take drastic measures, one of which should be getting hold of the people who do these things and punishing them, we are always going to be here. Mm. Jerome, I mean, you've been very passionate about this. Uh, aside, you know, uh, arresting and prosecuting these guys, don't you think playing in an empty stadium could also solve this problem? That, that could be a measure. But I'm saying that we can only, uh, 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 we can only recommend that mm -hmm. depending on what happens. Okay. I mean, if, if, if the level of misbehavior isn't as bad as uh, we, we would think, mm -hmm. I don't think it would be right. It might be harsh even placing a ban on a center or saying that that team that plays there should play okay. in an empty stadium. Okay. I'm just saying that we should get to the, to the bottom of the problem. The problem is that fans misbehave. Mm. There is nothing to, 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 to show them that what they are doing is, is not right. Look, last, about two or three weeks ago, mm. Coach of Adriana Stars yeah. made statements that all of us condemned. Yeah, Coach Stando. About four weeks now, the coach, I mean, nothing has happened to him. Mm -hmm. The protocol official made similar threats. Even going to the extent of saying that if a certain referee comes to Kumasi, he'll be shot. Hmm. I mean, these are no statements we should entertain. Yeah. And if after three, four weeks, such officials, nothing has been said to them. In fact, uh, Dr. Amma was saying yesterday that the coach was asked to apologize. He didn't apologize, so they referred him to the DC. If you do this, what it means is that you cannot deal with the problem. And when you are not able to deal with the problem, you encourage others to also do the very things that all of us don't like. Okay. John, thanks so much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. So uh, that was my colleague, friend, Jerome Mochery, uh, speaking to us uh, on all that's been going on in the last 24 hours, uh, from the attack uh, to the decision of the Normalization Committee to temporarily ban Bukum Chelsea from using the Golden City Park. Definitely will do more in terms of reactions on this uh, very uh, latest development. But away from uh, here on the local scene, you know, we're building up to the Africa Cup of Nations, which will be staged in Egypt in June. Well, the local organizing committee yesterday announced the prizes for match tickets for the tournament. The organizing committee for this year's Nations Cup in Egypt has announced the ticket prices for this summer's tournament. Tickets will go from approximately $6 to about 145 US dollars. Ticket prices for the games that don't include Egypt will be available at three levels, $6, $18, and $30. Tickets for Egypt matches will be slightly more expensive depending on the stage of the tournament at which we are. Earlier during the tournament, each ticket will entitle the owner to attend two matches on the same day in the same stadium.